So I've been a long time fan of Alacrity, the terminal emulator, and for good reason, I feel. It's been a very good terminal emulator for me, basically since the time I started using it. I've had no problems with it, really, whatsoever. I know a lot of people don't care for it because it doesn't have certain features, but I've always found it just fine. I don't find it slow, it has all the features that I want, and I've used it for so long that my configuration file is exactly the way that I want it. But recently, I have been having some problems with Alacrity, namely that when I use Ranger and I want to have image preview working, it doesn't actually work. And I don't know if that's a problem with Alacrity or if it's a problem with Uberzug or whatever it's called. Whatever it was, I couldn't get it to fix even after trying to do some troubleshooting on it. So I ended up looking for alternatives. And while I was spelunking my way through the Ranger configuration file, I noticed that Kitty has a built-in option for image preview. You don't have to have any extraneous application in order to get it to work. So I decided to give Kitty a try. Now I have used Kitty before in the past, a couple times actually. And honestly, the thing that has always turned me away from Kitty is the configuration file. Because if you've ever seen the default Kitty configuration file, and especially if you've opened it in Vim, you'll know that it starts off with everything folded. Now, the very first time I tried Kitty, I had no clue that Vim folds even existed. I had no clue that that was a thing. And I had no clue how to unfold anything in, in Vim. Uh, I looked at it, I was like, what the hell is that? Since when does Vim do this nonsense, right? I had no clue, right? I, I was completely lost. Now, obviously, since that time, I've learned more I'm more of a Vim user now than I was back then, and I know how to unfold basically anything that I want inside of Vim if I need to. I still don't like Vim folds. It's probably my least favorite feature of Vim out there, but you know that's kind of beside the point. So that's the reason why I've never actually used Kitty in the past is because I really didn't care for the configuration file. The way they do it is by basically putting all of the Kitty documentation right inside of the configuration file. And while I don't mind comments inside of a configuration file, I think that they can be useful. I don't want it to be a novel, right? The default configuration file for Kitty is something like four or five, maybe even 6,000 words, maybe even more. And it's just a really long configuration file. And the vast, vast majority of that is comments. It's the, basically the entirety of the, config, the Kitty documentation right there inside of the configuration file. And it always drove me nuts because I prefer a more minimal configuration file with a really good man page. Now, Kitty has a good man page. It also has spectacular documentation on their website. So the fact that they kind of decided to do double duty and have all that stuff inside of the configuration file always just kind of put me off on the wrong foot. But I decided I was going to try to look past all of that stuff. And for the last week, I have been using Kitty as my default terminal emulator on both my main machine and my standing desk. Now, I don't use it in my VMs because my VMs I use Tilex, but Everywhere else, I've been using Kitty, and I have some thoughts. So first, let me show you what my Kitty looks like. So we're just going to go ahead and go here. This is Kitty, and it looks like a terminal emulator. You know, there's nothing special here in terms of look and feel. I will say that it works fantastically well with Pi, Pi Wall, so if I wanted to change to a different wallpaper, I could do that. So let's just, you know, change to, I don't know, it doesn't really matter. We'll change to this one here, and uh, there we go. Well, it looks like phenomenally like the last one. Let's see if we can... <laughs> Turns out all of the cyberpunk wallpapers I have look kind of the same. Cyberpunk uses the same. Ah, oh, that one will work. Yeah, there we go. So as you can see, Kitty looks very good with Pywall enabled. It also has a ton of built-in color schemes. So if you wanted to use Kitty, but you don't want to have to mess around with changing the color schemes in the configuration file, you can get to a whole, like something like 700 different color schemes or something like that. It's some astonishing number of color schemes and you can change them right inside of the terminal. It's very easy. So that is nice. I don't use it up because I use Pywall, but that's one feature that I found was really cool. Now, as you can see in my scratch pad here, image previews work very well in Ranger. And that's because Kitty has that kind of stuff built right in, which is nice. It means you no longer have to go searching for a third party application or plugin in order to get image preview to work inside of Ranger. I've been using Uberzug for years, but that's no longer being maintained. And it's very not stable across different distributions. It works fine on Arch. It doesn't work fine on Fedora half the time. It, I've had problems with it on Ubuntu. So Uberzug is always a big issue for me. And it's been even more so since it was abandoned. Now, there is another option for image preview inside of Ranger. W3M works, but that is very 
not that great. If you were to move the cursor at all, half the time the image would disappear. It's not fantastic. But with Kitty, it has image previews built in. I no longer need that third-party support. It works very well. That's the main reason why I decided to switch to Kitty. Once, once I did switch to Kitty, I discovered something that made my day. Now, Alacrity, as far as I'm aware, does not have tab support. It would shock me if it did. And if somebody in the comment section says, yeah, Alacrity has tabs and you never discovered it, I'd feel really foolish. But I don't think it does. Kitty, however, does have tabs. So if I hit Control T, now I've changed the key bindings. So your key bindings may differ if you use Kitty. But as you can see down here along the bottom, I now have tabs. And I can actually click between them if I want, or I can hit Control Tab and it will switch between them. So I can run HTOP here and I can switch back and forth between these two tabs. And that's awesome. Everybody knows who watches my channel knows that I love tabs. Right now I have something like 230 tabs open in Firefox. It's just, don't judge me, I'm doing a whole bunch of research for a project, so half of those will go away. But the, the point is, is, I have a ton of tabs, I love tabs and everything. If you, if you see my file manager, I have tabs open in my file manager constantly. That's Crusader, it's wonderful, you should try it. The fact that my terminal emulator has tabs is awesome. Now, I know what you guys are thinking, There's are, there are a ton of terminal emulators out there that have tabs enabled or have tab support. So if I open up like Tilex or something, I think I have Tilex installed, yeah. Tilex has tab support, so I can open up another tab here in, in Tilex and it works just fine. And you know, I expect there to be tabs in a GUI terminal emulator. So like GNOME Terminal or Console or whatever, both of those are GUI terminal emulators and I expect them to have tabs. This is not a GUI terminal emulator. This is a regular terminal emulator that doesn't have any GUI support. The fact that it has tabs built in, really freaking cool. Now, I, I understand the vast majority of you are like, Matt, what the, what is your obsession with tabs? See, the thing is, is I like things to stay open. I'm stupid that way. It's not a healthy way of using my computer. I understand that. I've talked about my tab hoarding problem in a recent blog post. I can't help it. It's just kind of the way that I work. Now, I don't have, you know, like hundreds and hundreds of tabs open in a terminal. I have right now four that I've been using. I have my one that I've just been messing around with, SXHKDRC here. I have my Kitty configuration file, which I'll show you here in a minute. And then I just have a blank, ta blank tab along with my Ranger. I really like Kitty, to be honest with you. Once I manage to get the configuration file down to a reasonable looking thing, right? This is my configuration file. I took out most of the comments. The only place where I did not take the comments out were the keyboard shortcuts. I've left those because I still want to go through and do some configuration stuff here. I've left all those comments there for now, but for the most part, I've gone and taken out all the, the comments and documentation from the default configuration and made it my own as much as possible. Now, you can source other files from here, so if you wanted to source a, a color scheme, you could do that. Uh, like you, you would do in a YAML file for Alacrity, you could do that as well. And it's just a very easy to use configuration file. There's nothing all that you know special here. It's just a you know a setting and then a value, a setting value pair, a key pair. I think it's what they call them. And it's just very easy to do. And because the default configuration file is so well commented, you know, it, despite the fact that I don't really like all that com all the co all those comments, it's very easy to know what it does and that's the thing about kitty is that it has a ton of customization and configuration that i haven't even scratched the surface of yet so on their website where the actual documentation lives you can find all this customization that you can do including different window layouts because apparently kitty can be a tiling window manager if you wanted to you can change all the normal terminal stuff like scroll back and mouse and stuff like that but also has extensions things called kittens. Now I haven't seen any kittens here that I particularly care for other than the changing of the colors. All the rest of these don't really do anything for me. But the fact that it has extensions that you could theoretically build for yourself is pr pretty cool. Kitty has just a ton of different options like I said that I haven't even scratched the surface of yet. So over the course of the next month or so, I'm going to definitely dive into more of these options and stuff like that. So that's going to be something that's going to be entertaining for me for quite a while because I'm a nerd and I like to do most of my work inside of a terminal emulator. So uh, give me some, give me a new toy to play with, a new toy to customize, and I'm going to spend a lot of time with it. 
in terms of speed and stuff like that, I don't notice any difference between Kitty and Alacrity. They both seem equally fast to me, but I don't spend all my time compiling things and building code and all that stuff. So anything that is resource intensive, I really wouldn't notice because I don't do a lot of that stuff. In terms of running actual programs inside of the terminal, I've not had any problems. I've been using Nano now for a week with fairly large documentation and articles and stuff like that that I use for work. And I haven't noticed it being slow at all. Now, I never noticed Alacrity being slow at either when, it, when I was doing those things. So whether there's actually a performance benefit for Kitty, I'm not sure. I haven't seen one. Also, that's not how you quit, quit Nano for F's sake. I've been using it for a week and I'm still doing ZQ and colon WQ and half the time I want to move down in a document I'm using HJKL in order to move around. It's a week later. I'm still not okay with Nano. But that's for another video. <laughs> Good lord. Anyways, I'm switching to Kitty. I don't have a lot to say about it other than I think that it's really nice and I'm going to be spending some more time with it. I do want to say that the number of options that it has is kind of overwhelming even for someone who enjoys customization it's not a simple terminal now the defaults seem to be pretty good so if you don't want to delve into the custom you know the the configuration at all you could just use it and it would be fine uh, and then you can do the documentation and maybe learn how to change colors or something like that if you, you just only wanted to do that you could just be that type of person and be happy i'm the type of person who wants to configure stuff so it can be quite overwhelming if you find go in and find that there are you know a thousand different options that you can mess around with i like that but it like i said it can be confusing one thing i will say is that it is the documentation is exemplary so if you have any problems chances are in the documentation somewhere it's going to tell you exactly what you need to do how to fix the things you need to fix how to customize the things you want to customize and so on so that's it for this video, just a short one on, on Kitty. I think that it's a really good terminal emulator, and I'm happy that I switched. It took me a while to make the switch, to be honest with you. I really liked Alacrity. Now, I don't, if you guys remember, if you watched my channel for any amount of time, you know way, way back, my favorite terminal emulator was Termite. Now, I had a love affair with Termite. Similar to my love affair with Tabs and Crusader, Termite was my jam. It was my favorite terminal emulator. I really liked the configuration file. I spent a long time making it my own, and it was really, really good. Then it got abandoned, right? And that was my cue to switch to Alacrity, and I was very resistant to that change. Like, very, very resistant. I didn't want to use Alacrity. I thought that it was inferior in every way. It took me a long time to come around to the fact that Alacrity was really pretty good, right? I really enjoyed the automatic refresh of the configuration file that Alacrity had. You know, you make a change in the configuration file and Alacrity automatically would take on those changes after you saved the file. That was really cool. That's the one feature of Kitty that I truly miss. I really wish that Kitty would do that. I have done some Googling and found that there is a, a key binding that you can use to refresh the configuration. I don't know if it works. I haven't have actually tried it yet. I just found it like five minutes ago. So that's something that I'll be looking into. But it doesn't seem to be as automatic as the Alacrity version of that was. And that's a little bit of a shame. But outside of that, comparing them, the two of the terminal emulators, they seem fairly comparable for me personally. You guys got to remember, I'm not a programmer. So any programming features that they have that differ between the two of them I can't speak on I know from people that I've talked to that Kitty supports ligatures and that Alacrity does not I'm not sure what that means <laughs> so uh, I, well I, I, I know I vague I'm vaguely aware of what it means but I couldn't explain it to anybody so if that makes sense to you just know that fact Anyways, that's it for this video. If you have comments on Kitty, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel will not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. Like seriously, guys, thank you for your support. If you're still watching the video and uh, you haven't already, make sure you hit that like button because it really does help the channel out. Uh, I, I would really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Hack the algorithm, as Mendelala would say. Leave a comment. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. All that stuff that regular YouTubers tell you to do. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.